Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. Thank you for being here today. I am so excited to share with you a message that's been on my heart for a long time. And what it's about is speaking words of power into your life and your situation and your relationships. Do you ever really think about the words that come out of your mouth? A lot of people talk without even thinking, but do you realize that you have the power to speak life or death, unity or division, love or hate, peace or strife? And do you know that your words can shape your reality and influence others in your situation? And as a Christian, words of power, at least good words of power, are when what you speak aligns with the word of God. Words are important, and words can be powerful. The Bible tells us that God created the world by his word. You know, he said, let there be light, and there was light, and let there be this, and let there be that, and those things happened. He spoke everything into existence by his word, and he has given us authority to speak his word into our lives and our situations. Proverbs 18 and verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. And what that means is that we can either speak words that bring life and blessing and hope or words that bring death and curse and despair. We can either speak words that build up and edify or words that tear down. We can either speak words that heal or words that hurt. The choice is ours. And the consequences of what we speak and how we speak are very real. Now, before we dive in, I want to ask you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Just click that little subscribe button. We bring you a video each week, just one video of plain and simple Bible truths that will help you in your life and will bring you wisdom in the things of God and understanding in life. And also, be sure to share this video with a friend or two, someone that you know who would like and benefit from these basic Bible teachings, these teachings that are directly from the Word of God and have the principles of God in them. So today we're talking about speaking words of power. But how do we speak words of power? What's that mean? How do we speak words that align with God's will and with God's purpose? How do we speak things that line up with the word of God? How do we speak things that reflect his love and his power, his goodness and his righteousness, as well as his caring for people's lives? The answer is actually pretty simple. We speak what he speaks. That's number one. When we speak what he has already spoken in his word of God, his Bible, we speak what he has already promised. We speak what he has already declared in his word, and we just say the same things. The Bible says that the word of God gives light. And I want to tell you that unless you learn to love the word of God, unless you learn to get it into your spirit, unless you get into your Bible, you'll never have permanent victory. You won't be a permanent overcomer. So we speak his word over our lives, over our families, over our friends, over our enemies, over our circumstances, over our dreams, over our challenges, over our goals, over our opportunities, over our problems, over our future. We speak his word because his word is powerful. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of the joints and the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God's word is alive, powerful, and effective. His word can change things. His word can change us. His word can change our situation. His word can change people's lives. That's number one. Number two is adding faith to your speaking. You know, just speaking his word and quoting the Bible isn't enough. We also have to believe his word. We have to believe that what he says is true. We have to believe that what he says is possible. We have to believe that what he says is for us today, for our situations now, today. And as a Christian, words of power are not only when what you speak aligns with the word of God, but also when what you believe aligns with the word of God. They have to be backed up by faith. The words of God have to be backed up by faith. See, God isn't going to call us and then not equip us. He's not going to give us a vision and then not provide us with the resources to bring that vision to pass. He's not going to ask us to do something and then not enable us to do it. 
God is going to give us everything we need to fulfill his purpose for our lives. He's going to give us his spirit. He's going to give us his grace. He's going to give us his wisdom. He's going to give us his strength, his favor, his protection, his provision, his peace, his joy, his love, all of it. But we have to believe it. We have to receive it. We have to speak it. We have to act on it. Number three is to activate his word in your life. And don't let what has happened to you or even what is happening to you currently affect what God can do through you. Don't let your past or even your present circumstances or your problems limit your potential. Don't let your fears or your doubts or your insecurities stop your faith. Instead, let God's word renew your mind, transform your heart, and empower your spirit. Let God's word fill you with hope and confidence and courage. Let God's word inspire you and motivate you and activate you. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So we act on the words of God that we're speaking and believing. We act like they are his words. We act like they are true. Number four, be committed to what God is speaking to your heart and what he's speaking into your life. You know, just like you, I need to remind my flesh that I am living and acting on what God says, not just on what I feel or what I happen to be thinking in the moment. I have to remind myself and by faith commit that I will live according to the word of God as he reveals it to me and in me. And what that means is I will answer God's call and my answer to God's call will be yes, Lord. That means I will not hesitate. I will not procrastinate. I will not negotiate with God. I will obey. I will follow. I will serve. I will say yes to his plan. I'll say yes to his purpose. I'll say yes to his calling. And it also means that I'll believe for it all because the results are not about me at all. I'll not limit God by my own understanding. I'm not going to doubt God by my own reasoning. I'm not going to go by my own feelings. I'm going to trust. I'm going to expect. I'm going to speak up and I'm going to speak out what God puts in my heart. And I'm going to believe for his power. I'm going to believe for his promise. I'm going to believe for his miracle. And what that means is this, that I'm going to lift my head even when I fall, even when I fail. I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to lose hope. I'm going to rise back up. I'm going to press on. I'm going to overcome. I'll lift my head by his grace, by his mercy, and by his love. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And that means that no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, no matter what we endure, God's love for us is constant. God's mercy for us is new. God's faithfulness for us is great. You know, I want to be so consumed by God's call in my life that when distractions call, my line is always busy. I want to be so focused on God's purpose that when temptations come and lure me, my eyes are always fixed on God. I want to be so in love with God's presence that when troubles come, my heart is always at peace because of Jesus. I want to be so in tune with God that when anyone tries to speak discouragement into me or tries to bring me down, that I won't even hear it because I'm so consumed by the call of God on my life and in my heart. Could you imagine, say, a parent, a wealthy, loving parent offering all their money and their possessions and their wealth to their child, and the child says, nah, I'm hurting and I'm doing without, I'm really not making it, but I'm not going to receive all you're offering me. I just want to do it on my own. I mean, that seems crazy, but it happens every day. God offers us the gift of everlasting life and blessings, but so many people choose to look the other way and try to do for themselves what only God can do. So many times we choose to ignore his voice. We choose to reject his offer. We choose to miss his best, and it hurts us. But today, I want to challenge you to make a different choice, a choice that will change your life a choice that will honor God, a choice that you'll let him speak his words of power into your heart and into your spirit. And I pray that you choose to accept his gift of faith, his gift of forgiveness, his gift of salvation, and that you choose to receive his blessings so that you choose to live your life God's way, not just the ways of this world. 
I like where Micah chapter 7 and verse 8 says, Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. And that means that no matter what the enemy tries to do to us, no matter how he tries to attack us, no matter how he tries to deceive us, God is with us. God is for us. God is greater than any forces that come against us in this world. We have the victory, the Bible says, by faith. And we have the authority by the word of God. And we have the power by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, I have said these things to you. He said that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. Then he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And that means that no matter what the world throws at us, no matter what challenges we face, no matter what trials we endure, no matter what storms come upon us, Jesus is our peace, and Jesus is our source, and Jesus is our overcomer. And we have the peace, we have the provision, we have the power, and it's all from God. You have the power, the power of the Word of God, the power of your words when you make His words your words. You know, I pray for God to use me. I pray for him to use you, to speak words that bring life and not death, words that bring unity and not division, words that heal and not hurt, words that bring love and not hate, words that bring peace and not strife. We want to speak words that edify, that build up and not tear people down. We want to speak words that bring a blessing to people and not sorrow and a curse. We want to bring people to the presence of God, and we want to be people who speak words of power, and we will see and we will experience God's power at work in us and through us. And I pray that this message blesses you today. I pray that God uses you. I pray that God encourages you. I pray that his hand is upon you for good, and I always ask you to pray for me. I need it. I bless you for praying for me. And I just appreciate anybody that prays and asks God to lead me, guide me, and bless me. And I pray that all the blessings you pray come back upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.